Alrighty, so I thought I'd uh, just show a few products that can help out when things are this cold on how you can start things up. Now, first thing here we have is a 38,000 BTU Mr. Heater. This is a propane, propane fired heater. Uh, it's just essentially got a burner in there with a fan that blows, blows heat. Um, this I find it's it's really difficult to use this because the essentially when it's sitting flat, it's you know it's angled up or whatever. You can't really put anything on the end of this as far as like a heat sock or anything. And typically when it's on the ground, it would be, you know, if you're using it on a car or something, it's pointed straight up and, you know, you can't really tip it on its side or anything. So it's uh, not really the best option, but it is an option if you can kind of rig up, you know, a, a stove pipe or something on here to go under your vehicle and, and point up. But uh, these get really hot. So you kind of want uh, a little bit of, you know, kind of the air, let the air cool down before. Yeah, this thing will melt plastics and everything, so, you know, you got to be careful with these. So that's the first option. The second option, and probably the most uh, reliable, would be these silicone heating pads. Now, I live in Canada, so you can get these from Canadian Tire. I'd imagine if you're in the U.S., you can probably pick these up at... Uh, what is that harbor freight down there so you probably pick it up from that place uh, or any you know tractor supply company or anything like that so these these are handy uh, you want to install it sometime in the you know ideally in the summer when it's warm out or you know for the southern folks spring or fall is even warm enough because you got to clean off the surface and apply this with silicone so you want the ambient temperature to still be warm enough for that to fully cure properly. So that's a good option. This one I think is 100 watts. Yeah, this one's a 100 watt uh, heating pad. So that, that actually gets quite warm on there. Uh, another option. We have a... Is that 100 watts? Because that one says that it's... Okay, we're going to open this up and find out for sure. I just seen a 100 on there and assumed that that was watts. So let's have a look. Hundred and twenty-five watts is this uh, this heating pad. So that's going to get warm and uh, it's going to take some time though. So you're not going to plug this in and ten minutes later your your oil is warm enough to start the vehicle that's that's like a that's going to be an overnight kind of thing uh, the coolant heater that I have next this one it says available in 750 watt 1000 watt and 1500 watt so this one's a 750 watt model and uh, so it comes with uh, a few of the fittings you're going to need to plumb that into the to the coolant lines. Uh, I think this will be good enough to get the bus warmed up. 750 watts, we'll, we'll see how it does, I guess. Um, you know, cold coolant goes in one end, it heats it up, warm coolant comes out the other end, and it just keeps circulating around the block, keeping the block warm. This, I believe, is going to be it's going to be a little bit quicker to get your block warmed up, so I suspect if you plug this in, you know, an hour or two later, you're going to be ready to start. Now, these times may seem a little bit long, but you got to understand when it's minus 30 degrees Celsius outside, it's going to take a while for these products to, you know, heat up an entire engine like that, especially to the point of it starting, right? So, I mean, you can circulate coolant around the block is probably going to be the best way to keep it warm because, you know, you're going to keep everything inside of the block warm, all the pistons, like that's that's really going to keep everything uh, from... I would say it would better protect the engine from sustaining damage on a cold startup. Uh, but it's, it's, it's kind of a catch-22. You want everything to be warm. So, you know, like that coolant heater is going to heat up your engine, great, but now you're still dealing with cold oil. So you want the... 
you want the oil pan heater as well, right? To keep the to keep the oil warm. Uh, you're also going to want to use fuel additives so that the fuel's not gelling up in the filters. I've even seen on some some vehicles on uh, usually larger diesel engines they have actually heating pads on the fuel filters to keep them warm as well as your batteries you know having a battery blanket and keeping the battery warm that's that's going to be your cranking amps that you're going to need to get that engine started so there's there's many different things that kind of play roles in in a vehicle starting up in extreme cold weather like this the problem is going to be when you're plugging this stuff into your let's say house for example right like if you got a, a thousand watt coolant heater and then you got a 125 watt oil pan heater and then you got another however many watt battery blanket right like you know who i don't know how much the battery blankets are i, can, I don't want to say a number off the top of my head but you know typically a 15 amp circuit on your house which is going to be pretty common of what people are plugging their block heaters into it they can only handle 1800 watts at the most so you kind of got to watch um how much you're plugging in here because you you will blow a breaker and then then nothing's getting warm right so the next thing i'm going to show you is kind of for extreme cases it'll be this unit here it is a kerosene heater forced air so it has a fan in the back on the front it blows against that metal plate right here that gets really really hot and this thing it shoots hot hot air and the apparatus on the front of this thing is where a heater sock goes onto there. So literally just like your tube sock, except, you know, it would be about 10 feet long. You run that right up under the engine. And honestly, half an hour, half an hour of, of running this thing and, and that engine is going to be close to starting. If you've got a, a heavier heavier duty engine like you know a big heavy duty diesel engine or something like that is probably going to take an hour maybe two hours of, of running this heater on there and getting it real nice and hot um, the the benefit of this is you're not gonna you're really not going to melt any plastics um, especially if it's minus 30 minus 40 uh, you know you you run that line run your tube sock out stuff it up underneath the uh, the engine bay at the lowest point that you can because obviously heat rises and uh you know this this is going to be your you know i need to get this thing started today kind of option um yeah so and these actually work really good those kerosene heaters they they also run on diesel um i don't know how expensive these units are getting these days i bought this thing many many years ago when i was uh living in my rv I lived in my RV up in northern Alberta when it was minus 50 out, and uh, I had to run this thing underneath the underneath the RV to keep the pipes from freezing. Um, that that was some tough times up there. So I've I've owned this thing for a long time, and it's been reliable. Uh, a lot of people say these things plug up and everything. I haven't had that happen yet. I've watched some YouTube videos on how to clean them out and everything, so that information is out there if needed. But I I would highly recommend having one of these you know if you're going to have heavier duty vehicles around or if you're living in a northern climate and you need to you really need to start something this is going to be your best option you know uh, sometimes sometimes these coolant heaters and stuff like that are you know that's that's great and everything like that but that's that's an option for plugging in every night and you know if maybe you forgot about that option or you know you you didn't plug in or you don't have that option and, and you need to get something started well, if you've got an extension cord, a couple, like I said, you can either use diesel or kerosene. So if you've got a couple jugs of kerosene or you've got a couple cans of diesel laying around, it's not picky. It'll take anything. Uh, you know, run an extension cord out to it, grab a heater sock, and uh, she's going to fire up in, in, uh, in an elapsed amount of time. Uh, I'd like to show you that heater sock, which I have in here, but... They're friggin' annoying. All right, I'll do it. Whatever. It's a good thing I keep everything organized really, really well here. It just makes it so much, uh, you know, easier for accessing this stuff. Yep. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. This is the heater sock. 
you undo these straps. This is essentially, I think this one's either a 10 or a 12 foot long tube. These little tabs here push down and it just goes right on the end, right on the end of that. And then, you know, this tube will come out 10 feet or so, 10 or 12 feet or however long you've, you've got it. And uh, you run that right underneath your engine bay, let her run for an hour or two. And whatever it is you're trying to start is going to start, unless you're having other problems. But if the only problem is the engine being cold, you put this on it, and within, just to be safe, I'd say within two hours, it's going to be running for you. Well, those are, those are some of the options available to you if you're trying to start uh, cold vehicles. The, the first option I showed you there, the propane heater, like I said, I wouldn't really recommend that. Oh, there was, there was one more. I almost forgot. I almost forgot. How the hell do I have this apparatus stuff there? Bollocks. Okay. So we do have another product here. Uh, these are what's called a Tiger Torch. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. But uh, the, the actual Tiger branded torch, these will last you forever. You buy one and it's it's going to last you. They're They're really, really, really good. They're not like the, the cheap, flimsy ones you get from Princess Auto or Harbor Freight. But, you know, I, I'm a believer in in what you you get what you pay for, right? So typically I try to buy the, the more expensive product that's going to last me longer. Uh, th these are expensive. So honestly, I'll recommend the, the weed-burning torches, I think they're called, from... Uh, from Princess Auto or Harbor Freight, uh, you know they're they're quite a bit cheaper than this, so I think that they have a handle on them that you might have to hold down though. So that could be a bit of a problem if you can find a way to either not have a handle or keep it steady on. What you do is you just take your torch and a piece of stove pipe or dryer vent or anything like that. If you can find something that can sustain the heat, you just put this in the pipe. And then you have an elbow on the other end. Just drive that underneath there and make sure that uh, you got enough length on it. Like you want to keep this back probably five or six feet. Uh, and then have your elbow. So, so it's got a bit of time to cool down a bit. Otherwise you'll burn the, burn the plastics on the bottom side of your engine. And then uh, that being said, you want to make sure that you don't have a belly pan or something. A lot of, uh, well, most cars these days have a belly pan under them. And... Um, Obviously, you, you wouldn't be able to do that. You would literally catch your car on fire, so be careful of that. Uh, but typically, most trucks don't have a belly pan or anything on it. So if you're trying to start a truck, you know, this is kind of the bush way to do it that I was shown. So all you've got is a Tiger torch, a stovepipe, and a propane tank. You don't have any electricity available to you or anything like that for any of these other options, right? All these other options that i shown... Uh, require electricity but that is the option if you don't have electricity you get a tiger torch propane tank and a stovepipe and make sure that you don't melt any plastics with it so those are your uh, kind of cold start options i guess i would like to try to use that kerosene heater and start the bus but uh i've got i'm at the end of my my cycle for being on my days off and I don't have the time. I got other stuff I need to do today before I go back to work. So if it's cold on my next days off, we'll run that kerosene heater and see if we can kind of test how long it would actually take to heat up a bigger diesel engine like that. It's a 7.3 liter diesel engine. So well, maybe we'll test that out in, the, in one of the upcoming videos. Well, thanks again for watching. In this video, we discussed some of the options that you can use for getting your vehicles to start up in the cold weather. Hit the subscribe button if you're uh, not subscribed to my channel. It uh, really helps me out and it doesn't cost a dime. And if you're already subscribed, hit the like button. It uh, definitely helps get more views on the channel. So thanks again for watching guys. Hope you have a great day.